Professor, the 20th National Congress of the CPC is in session to review the accomplishments it made and the challenges it will face and set new goals for the sustainable development of the country. What's your reflection on the Communist Party of China in general and its role in the progress the country has made so far? I think the 20th um, Party Congress um, is an enormous opportunity to celebrate the progress. The biggest of all progress is, of course, to bring every single Chinese out of poverty. Remind yourself that, uh, that when China started opening up in 1980, China was number 177 on the list of nations in the world, ranked in economy per capita. Nearly all Chinese at the time were very, very poor eating, yes, noodles in the north, rice in the south, but hardly anything else, wearing the same clothes and ha having basically nothing. In four decades, China has brought more people out of poverty than any other nation at any point in human history. And the Congress is an opportunity to celebrate that. And of course, the role uh, of the party leading that change. But it's also an opportunity to look ahead. What is the next? And I think the next for China is more high quality growth, not just growth, not just bringing people out of poverty and bringing everyone up into a middle class into a decent life in harmony with nature. It's an opportunity to set the target of an ecological civilization. We need to produce more, get people out of poverty, but for sure it needs to happen with more respect and more humility to nature. So, Professor, we recently we can see that, especially during the pandemic uh, period, in the Western media, China and the CPC has been gave a very grimy image. Um, what are the most notable differences between the CPC you observe and the CPC in the Western narrative, in your opinion? First of all, what most foreigners, or at least many foreigners, don't really understand in China is how deeply rooted the Communist Party is in Chinese history and traditions. At the end of the day, the Communist Party became the major political force in China because it was seen by the people of China as the vehicle to rise up after 100 years of humiliation. China wanted to be a great nation again, modern, prosperous, everyone out of poverty, and the Communist Party became the vehicle for this. And today it's the main standard bearer of Chinese patriotism, and the vast majority of Chinese, I mean, many Americans don't understand that, but the vast majority of Chinese support the party and, 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 and the leadership. The way forward uh, for the world is to accept that you need to work together. Let's accept that, that China has a system deeply rooted in its history and tradition. Uh, United States and European countries have system deeply rooted in their tradition. What we need to do is to work together. But the current situation of global politics is far from stable, with confrontation, conflict, and hostility towards each other, to some extent set barriers between nations. In the face of such profound challenges, China has proposed the Global Development Initiative, which is in line with China's long-term stand that development is the key for solving all the problems. What's your vision on the solution to the current paradox? How may China under the CPC's direction contribute to the current world peace and stability? I'm answering your questions from India. And here in India, there is an old saying from the Vedas 2,500 years ago. It says, the whole universe is one family. And that we should really, really take at heart because all the major problems of over time, whether it's environment or climate change, to bring everyone of Africa out of extreme poverty, to solve the health problems after COVID-19, COVID or to keep peace in places like Ukraine and other places, we need to work together. Only together we can solve all this, and then we need to focus on what, what is uniting us, not about what is dividing us. Some political leaders want to fo fo focus on what divides us. It's so counterproductive, much, much, much more, which unite humanity, and that's what we should focus on. And we should accept that we will have for the all foreseeable future, different system, different culture. There will be different religions in the world, but we need to work together. China will not be India, India will not be Europe, uh, uh, Europe will not be America, but we can all work together. This is CGTN Radio. Hear the difference.